everybody and welcome to another vlog I am so happy that you watched the last one and that you seemed to like the last one So I'm going to try and put another one out there Last time I did a life, a day in my life But this time I think it's gonna be a couple of days in my life combined into one video Because doing it all in one day was kind of like It was, it was tough Let's say I'm not gonna go from zero to hero over here. I'll leave it to the vlogging experts I'm gonna try my best to snow snow show 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 snippets here and there So if you're here from Instagram, you probably know that in two weeks time we have to move to a new place We've been in our current apartment for two years But in Qatar it's very common to just do one or two year rental agreements and then you renew uh, But unfortunately our landlord does not want to renew so it's been really stressful actually for like the past two or three months we've been trying to find a new place and we wanted to actually have an extra bedroom this time around just for a guest room or a nursery or just to have a little bit more space but we could not find anything to our liking so we're moving to a same size place but at least alhamdulillah yesterday we found the place and we signed it and everything which is a huge relief because like we need to move on the 10th of may and today is like the 30th of april or something so super last minute but i don't think you would expect anything less from me like i am the embodiment of lastminute.com however the new place has uh, small terraces uh as opposed to our current place that has like a large balcony space so i'm just sitting here on the balcony soaking up the last of this view and also i'm gonna start taking pictures because i need to start selling stuff because there is no place for any of this stuff in the new place so yeah Time to take some pictures and then upload them probably on Facebook groups. Uh, yep. Look how pretty the sky and everything is today. It was a miraculous day in the sense that it rained actually in the morning in Qatar, which like almost never happens. But now the weather is just so beautiful and I'm really, really gonna miss this view. One of my Ramadan morning routines is preparing this date drink for iftar time. So one of our friends gifted us these dates. They're called Mabroom dates and they are like they are rock hard. And he said these are amazing. These are the best dates and we're kind of like knocking them against the table and we're wondering like why is he excited about these dates? But then we discovered if you soak them in milk, it is the best thing ever. So let me quickly show you how I do it. This is um, something I do every morning, so around like 9, 10, 11 ish, and then around 6 o'clock we have it. So make sure you soak them like at least 5 6 hours before, and you will not regret it. So I have a glass of cold milk over here, and then I take these dates. I know it seems really weird to use scissors with dates, but I found that this just works best. I cut it into pieces and remove the pit from the inside, focus, uh, and I, then I just put it into milk. When I posted this on Instagram, I got so much different like random kinds of advice um, saying like add coconut, add apricots, uh, put it with boiling milk, then put like I don't know what and uh, put cinnamon, but this is the way we like it best. So soak it at least, I would say five hours-ish before it's iftar time and then put it back in the fridge. So do this, and now I'm gonna put it back in the fridge, and then we are going to have it at around six. And by that time, I promise you, it's like this yummy, 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 yummy dessert. So definitely try it out if you haven't tried it already. Bilvi is waiting for me right here, just like she is every single morning. It's breakfast time, so let me just feed her. Sometimes I really wonder why I am the way I am. I don't know what happened in my childhood or like <laughs> there's some things just don't make sense. So I was just decluttering. I was just showing you guys that I need to move out of the apartment and get rid of a lot of things because I don't have space for them. And then 10 minutes later, I'm in my car. So happy with this new faux olive tree that I got that's literally taller than me. And I just, I, I think it's the one thing that was missing from my happiness and I have zero regrets. I even put a ribbon on it. Um, the only thing is I think my husband's gonna be a little bit suspicious if I just walk in like waltz into the apartment like nothing Nothing's going on nothing wrong here. Nothing to look at over here. It's just me and my tree Um, Yeah, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that But I honestly don't think he will notice like if he's not home and I managed to smuggle it in really quickly I don't think he will notice because Haytham calls like he says 
I don't notice small details. So for example, for reference, if he parks his car and there's clearly parking lines, like if this is the line, he'll park his car like, like this over the line. And then I'm like, why'd you park your car like that? And he'll be like, he'll sincerely, sincerely be like, well, I didn't notice, uh, I didn't notice the lines. I don't notice small details. And like, parking lines are not small details. So basically, I think my tree has a chance. I think my tree has a good chance of not being noticed. Also, this just happened. How so gross! Ugh! I was just taking a photo of me and my um, new olive tree for Instagram to see what you guys think. Is Haitham gonna notice? <laughs> and just for reference, this is how tall the tree is. This is me. <laughs> it's a splurge, to be honest. It's from Pottery Barn. I'll link it in the description. But it's so nice. I normally don't really do photo shoots during Ramadan, but I have a really exciting collaboration coming up with a clothing brand, so I'm actually super like. Dee. Anyway, the outfit is really cool, so I hope by the time that I am able to upload the pictures and show this video, that these items are still going to be available. It's like this floral kimono, and I'm going to pair it with like these blue jeans, and I think it's going to look really, really nice. But the outfit needs to be steamed, so that's what I'm going to do now. You know, my mom actually got me this uh, steamer. She got it all the way from Estonia. I don't know how she fit it in her luggage, but when I got married, she's like, you need a steamer. And she just arrived to put that one day with a steamer in her luggage. And ever since I have it, so I'll try to link something similar if I find it. Uh, but honestly, I'm pretty old school. I still prefer to iron for some reason. And I feel like this is taking way too long. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna iron it instead. So I heard a noise and I came and I'm not gonna lie, I've been working on this puzzle for ages. So loving this, loving this for me. Thank you, cats. My Amazon order just came in and I got this downy wrinkle releaser. I've never tried it before, but my friend was telling me that supposedly, especially for like bed sheets and stuff, that this stuff is supposed to be amazing. Okay, am I going crazy or does this stuff actually work? So, this is the belt for the kimono, as you can see, it's super wrinkled. This is the first time I'm trying this. Okay, spray the thing. And then, just do this. Right? Right or no? Oh my god, this is gonna be revolutionary for... Where am I? For bed sheets. It is now 4.10, so I think it would be wise of me to enter the kitchen, so I'm not surprised that it's our time again, but it's my turn to cook again today, so I'm making something a little bit naughty, but it's so, so, so good. It's my fried sea bass. Uh, I do deep fry it, which is not my preferred option, especially in Ramadan, like we try to keep it healthy because we're also, you know, fasting for our health benefits and all that. Uh, but you know, balance, balance every once in a while. Um, it tastes really good. I did try to make it in the air fryer as well and it tasted okay, but it didn't like mwah, hit the spot, you know? So yeah, I'm uh, gonna go to the kitchen and I'll see you guys there. Before I go on with my day, I just want to take a moment to say god bless god bless the inventor and creator of the dishwasher i love you now here we have our sea bass and what i'm just going to do i wash them with some water and some vinegar to get rid of the yucky smell so i'm just going to make it into like smaller chunks and i'm going to place them in a separate dish And now what I'm gonna do is pat the fish dry. And when it's kind of dry, then I'm going to start marinating it. Honestly, it doesn't need to stay for a long time. None of my recipes ever require you to start planning a long time in advance. Just like 15, 20 minutes is more than enough. So first let's dry our fish. One of my resolutions when we move to the new place, cause over there we're gonna have an open kitchen with like a countertop. 
Um, so hopefully I want to do more cooking videos because in this kitchen there is no space for me to put the camera because all like the counters are built into the wall so it's really difficult to uh, record any kind of recipe but anyway now I have the fish over here I believe it's nearly this is like 1.7 kilos or something like that and it's filet so for the marinade you're only gonna need four things very generous amount of salt some pepper and lots and lots of cumin Egyptians love their cumin like I feel they're obsessed with cumin I don't like cumin but in this recipe I promise you it works and the fourth magic ingredient is loads and loads of lemon oh no So this is the fish. Um, on both sides I put uh, very generously some salt, some pepper, um, lots and lots of cumin and lots and lots of lemon. Then dip it into flour and then dip it into oil. I'm using uh, spicy avocado oil just because we all love spicy food and it gives a nice kick. And that's pretty much it. So just be very generous with the with the seasoning, ladies. Um, but normally in Ramadan we try not to eat a lot of fried food. But never is... forget the barah beloved. Yeah. The and thank you, milk. all the followers. I do not want to add coconut, and I do not <laughs> want to add nuts, and I'm not gonna try to boil it first in hot milk and then put it in the fridge, and I'm not gonna add hot water, and then I'm not gonna add honey to already sweet dates. I don't want any of these. I just want cold milk, soap, and and dates. So this is the way That's he likes it. it. <laughs> Thank you. I do not like cinnamon. Haytham <laughs> likes it just like this. I love fried fish. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's time. It's two minutes late. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy who uh, makes the adhan from the mosque next to our house, he's always like two or three minutes late. Uh, and I always tell him like, I tell Haytham, He's having his dates because like 10 years ago, my teacher told me by the time that the guy calls to prayer, he has already broken his fast. So I guess the one <laughs> likes to have dates. So I'm like, just give him some time. He's having his dates. Good? Good morning everybody, this is the second day of me vlogging. I'm probably going to make this into one vlog consisting of two days. So it's Friday, pretty early morning, I am just getting ready. I'm going to go take those pictures that I told you guys about yesterday. And honestly it's going to be such a struggle to just get out of my loungewear because loungewear is just like the best thing ever. But then... Um, yeah, we wanted to do the photos of Friday early morning just so there's nobody on the streets and we can just go. I mean, it's Ramadan, it's Friday and early morning. So I think there's not going to be anybody in the streets except us. This is the kimono. It has this floral detail and this scarf. And then this is what it looks like. I'm probably just going to do my signature move of this a hundred times back and forth and then hopefully get the shots and yep yeah. I am beat <laughs> daytime now it's like 38 degrees Celsius so when I got back home now I just drank a lot of water I'm not fasting today um, and I only slept like four or five hours last night so I think I'm gonna shower I'm gonna pray Doha and I'm gonna go take a nap. Take it, don't take it. No, 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 I yes. can't do it. No, it's against Please me. Please, I don't like doing this. Yeah, but just do it. <laughs> no. Just do it. It's so annoying. I will unstuck it at night. Ugh. Take the pillow. Don't forget to put the zipper down. 
I thought I was going in for like this juicy yummy nap I was ready to nap for like hours but I don't know if this happens to you like for example my husband over here um, when he's sleeping and somebody calls me I'm like and I escape the room and I like try to not wake him up anybody calls him when I'm sleeping Hello. I got dressed instead and been meeting some people who are coming over to check the things that I put on sale So just sold our first item which is like sad, but it's good to get rid of stuff So now I was telling Haitham I want to sell my dresser unit set because I don't love it It's from Ikea and I got it like five years ago and I feel like You know, I'm just going for this other vibe. I'm Marie Kondo now. I'm Marie Kondo Marie Kondo. <laughs> she has a show on Netflix about getting rid of stuff you don't need. I like Marie Kondo then, but <laughs> yeah. Marie Kondo doesn't replace it with something else and doesn't go two days before you move to <laughs> buy another tree. <laughs> so that's not, you're definitely not Marie Kondo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this tree is like an essential. Yeah, we can, I'd like minimalism for sure. Yeah, minimalism with an olive tree. That's not minimalism. No, no, this can it, be my it, show. You're replacing. A slima, the are minimalist you gonna replace with the, an olive no, tree. No, are you going to replace the cabinet? Or yes, of course going, I'm going to replace that, it. That's not minimalism. Well, not, where that's, do you, <laughs> that's capitalism. <laughs> where do you think that's I'm greedism. going? That's greedyism. Where am I going to keep my shirt? So you're temporarily being minimalistic. <laughs> no, <laughs> Until but you move to the new place. I just don't want to go to the new place with stuff so, I don't like. Okay, I, maybe I'm not Marie Kondo. Yeah, you're not even close to Marie Kondo. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye Marie. So a little bit of the behind the scenes now that I have all the pictures um, from the shoot that we did. I uploaded everything from the memory card onto my hard drive. And now I'm going to go through all of them. Usually there's a lot of pictures because I'm a little bit crazy i like to have a huge variety and then i um, choose the ones that i like then normally in the morning i start by writing down my to-do list um so i've only completed one of those things so far and yeah now i'm gonna sort through my pictures edit them and then send them over to uh, my manager and the brand and hopefully by tonight and definitely by the time you guys see this vlog the pictures would be up uh yeah i don't know i just like to see the behind the scenes of like other people's um lives so i thought i'd share that and this is what i'm probably going to be doing for the next one two three four hours let's see how long this takes so i'm just on my lightroom a lot of people ask me um how do i edit my photos so normally the process is i bring all of the raw files into lightroom then i go through all of them and choose the shots that i like the most then i would import them on my phone and then on my phone i also like to use the the teza app um so yeah i usually do a combination of lightroom and then the teza app that's what i normally do and what i enjoy doing while i work i'm just gonna pull out my um quran lamp and uh you guys probably know that my favorite reciter is omar hisham um, obviously he doesn't exist on the lamp, he's like super new age, but I connected to my Bluetooth. So incredibly proud <laughs> how nicely I did the bed today I feel so victorious because one of my goals as a grown-up is to make like a nice bed but this took me like an hour to not okay not an hour but it took like way too much effort so if anybody has any tips how to achieve a nice put together bed look without spending like tons and tons of effort because now I'm like hey them's like oh my god I can go sleep on it and I was like, sleep on it, loud. sleep on These it. All After all the effort that yes. I put into making it, there, no, no. She was selling her furniture today, <laughs> and that is the only reason why we haven't organized. Because so many people were coming like in and bed. out to uh, access yes. the balcony, which is one of the weird things about this apartment. To get to the balcony, you have to go through the bedroom, which yeah. has always been like so weird because 
like, hi, please come through my bedroom. Um, but yeah, so it was a huge mess. And then I was like, okay, people are gonna pass by. Let's make it nice. And then it ended up turning out so nice. That we that, slept on the couch in the living room. <laughs> that, that That's how bad it was. I had to sleep on the couch in the living room because I'm not allowed to touch the bed. So, ladies, if anybody has any tips how to make a nice like hotel looking or like a, a nice... A tip for newlyweds. If you're going to buy a couch in the living room, make sure it's comfortable. It doesn't have to be Instagrammable, but it has to be comfortable. <laughs> I suffered through this the first three or four years of our marriage. We had an uncomfortable Instagrammable couch. <laughs> no, we had a cute I, couch. Yes, cute couch. <laughs> it was cute. So we had to buy it because it was cute, but it was uncomfortable. And it affected our relationship because I could not lounge in the living room. Yeah, he was upset. Uh, every time he just had a bad mood at work or like had a bad day, he would just lay down on the sofa and then just start suddenly like out of nowhere, everything's fine. And he's like... I hate this couch and he would randomly like pick up an argument about the sofa for like three years so now finally we got an l-shaped sofa that's super comfortable and he's happy i'm happy and actually i have to admit he was right it is cozy okay it's our time we have to go uh we're gonna pick up food from an amazing place uh because restaurants are still closed because that is an impartial lockdown but yeah let's just appreciate my bed for like one more second so pretty ready? okay yeah i'm ready so for the first time this Ramadan, we are gonna go pick up food. So it's Haytham's turn to cook, as you can tell. So uh, we're gonna go at this restaurant. It's like one of the OG places. They don't even have delivery, but they have like a super loyal clientele and customer base because Haytham personally considers it the best mixed grill in the entire country. So if you're watching this and you're in Qatar and you have not tried Shebistan, then you have to do it. It's, it's Irani. Meat and yeah. just it's from Tehran, it's good. so yeah, we're driving there now to pick it up, and then if that is like 30 minutes. And since I have new sunglasses, I have to wear them. I'm one of those people, <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those like people, like, like, like even if we're in darkness and there's no sun, but I have new sunglasses, I have to wear the sunglasses, like it just yeah. makes sense. I wanted to share a little tip maybe with those um, who are not uh, Arabic speakers. So something that has helped me, let me just flip over the camera. So my advice would be to study the Arabic alphabet as best as you can. So for like the past 10 years, um, obviously I'm not fluent in Arabic, but I did study um, the alphabet. Even if I want to read this, it's gonna take me a very, very, very long time to read it. But how I've been uh, going through and navigating the Quran is that I would play the audio by my favorite reciter. And then thanks to knowing the alphabet and having a Quran translation that has both English and Arabic, I'm able to follow where the reciter is. So like I would be able to know that he is in this paragraph right now. So at the same time, I would be reading the English. And because the Quran is really repetitive, in time, slowly, slowly, like certain things would start sticking to my mind, like certain words that would be repeated more often, I would learn their meaning. And now I notice, like, for example, if I'm walking somewhere and this particular chapter is uh, played somewhere, I'm able to understand actually which part of the chapter he is reading from just from doing this method. I've never like uh, purposely memorized this chapter, but I kind of like if I hear the audio, I would know, oh, this is currently the part that talks about Moses or like, oh, okay, he's currently at the part that talks about this. So I found that to be really useful. And uh, so instead of just listening to the audio or instead of just trying to read the Arabic that um, we don't understand, uh, it's very helpful to have the English side by side and it's helpful to know exactly where he is So you're able to I feel like get the most out of it I don't know if this is helpful or not, but for me, this is how I like to navigate it and I found it useful So I thought maybe this is useful for, so, so, for somebody else as well <laughs> This doesn't fit this your doesn't muddy kondo like, lifestyle that you just talked about. This is more like taekwondo. <laughs> it's like Hurricane Estima. Oh no. It's I'm unbelievable. Like, hey, wait, I'm so, wait, what happened? I'm ghost. Oh, I am... Oh, unbelievable. Ooh. 
what I was trying to say that this is my chance to become Maripondo? <laughs> yes. You're not even close to it. <laughs> but you're I... not even a cousin. You're not a distant <laughs> cousin. You're far, far, far from anything minimalistic. Yeah, but I okay. want to become. Yes. So I also I've got want intentions. You to be there. Oh yeah. Nia that... counts. Oh Nia counts. <laughs> okay, the Nia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say I am yeah, starting to realize that it's even a bit shameful to use my name and her name in the same sentence. Yes. <laughs> but I have good intentions. I'm trying to minimalize. Uh, did I miss the? I missed the. No! I missed the. Ah! I missed the exit. He was upset. So, uh, yeah, it's iftar time. Do you want to break your it fast? It was iftar time. It was iftar time. Do you want to break your uh, fast with water? Because we don't have dates in the car. With sparkling water. You understand? I am fine breaking my fast with anything. It's you that expects me to sit down, break it with a date, three <laughs> dates, an odd number Wait. of dates. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to break it with water or yes, not? Yes. Wait. Did you make a prayer? No. no then no, 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 no breaking no, for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think it's time to call it a day and I think it's also time to end this vlog now I feel like it's been going on and on and on I feel also like maybe it wasn't this exciting this time around, but I hope you enjoyed watching it nonetheless uh, I just wanted to end the video on something like Ramadani <laughs> So the other day I was reading this book secrets of divine love and there's one sentence that I underlined that I wanted to share which says Ramadan was not sent by God to imprison or to chain you. It is a divine gift that was meant to inspire and to change you. So now we've entered the last 10 nights and the last 10 days of Ramadan. And I just want to put a quick message out there because I know a lot of people feel guilty that they haven't been doing their best and maybe you didn't reach all the goals that you have for yourself or maybe you were super excited in the beginning and then you kind of fell off the wagon in the middle. Like we've definitely all been there. Um, but now that we have 10 days left, Think of it as a blessing and just do the best that you can. Don't overwhelm yourself, but God knows your efforts and God knows that you're trying. And let's just pull ourselves together for this last effort. And um, inshallah, it's going to be worth it and full of blessings. And I just wish that everybody is able to reap the benefits and uh, end this month in a good tone because you know it matters how how you finish it doesn't matter how you started so we still have time and we still have a chance so let's make the most out of the time that is left because it is a beautiful blessed and sacred time and i hope that all of us are able to also remember that it's not just about you know fasting from food and drink and water but it's a time where we should be fasting from hatred and passing judgment and jealousy and root out the evil um things that we all have within us like we all have good and bad right um so that it is the fasting of the inward and i pray for all of you and please pray for me as well and i do think that i can squeeze in one more vlog this ramadan but for now i wish you the best of luck for the last 10 days and um yeah thank you for watching salam <laughs>